everyone and welcome to this video uh, where we're going to be looking at this speed lapse okay so in this video this video is going to be mostly focused on uh, the foundation uh, um, it took me a lot of trouble to figure out foundation but uh, eventually I think I did figure it out uh, there might be a few areas of discrepancies here and there were out you know in a in the modeling process further along in the modeling process uh, we might uh, modify them and change them as the need come but <clears throat> for now this is what we are um, so these foundations were a bit tricky because they weren't exactly clear because the cuts uh, do not exactly show uh, all the information so in some places I had to do a lot of guesstimation uh, to understand what's going on in the drawing um, what else can I say I think that this project is starting to become a little bit uh, self-explanatory um, for the most part if you just uh, watch it uh, you start to get a sense of, of uh, the thinking the thinking mindset when you're working here so that you can adapt it depending on your need and if you need to slow down or pause the initial the video you can go to the initial uh, video where I you know it's not sped up and you can get the information you want um, but Part of the reason why I wanted to get the foundation out of the way is because I want to actually group. Uh, I want to start creating this cluster of groups of elements. Like if you're the structure, I put everybody in the structure so that if you want to do some type of uh, FEM analysis, you can just uh, grab the structure and then uh, you know. Because at this point, uh, the main elements of the model already are in place what's left now is the fine tuning uh, adding some of the small elements finishing the stairs getting the appliances and you know you know all those little elements um, but at this point since the, the the project already has so many information it is crucial to start organizing that and that's why I wanted to get the foundations out of the, uh, the structure out of the way and that meant handling the foundation so this uh, video is heavily focused on just the foundation, uh, fixing the foundation. Once this is done, the next thing would be to see how we can group them in this way. Like right now, you can, as you can see here, I'm uh, I'm gonna join. Um, I'm gonna join these things, this this foundation, so that it create one solid element. Uh, but what if I were able to to do this this the same for the entire structure because when you look at what's cast um, in the plans it's a continuous um, it's a continuous concrete form so you want to be able to represent that in the drawing instead of having these interesting lines that demarcate whether or not this is a beam or this is a, uh, a structure or what you know or a column or whatever so here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, I was trying to make sense of um, what's actually going on because this, the, you know, on the ground level there are beams as well but there are footers and so initially the picture looks like the footer is all continuous around, you know, but um, because the AutoCAD line weights that I'm looking at are not exactly explicit, they're not exactly very clear um, what is in front and what's behind. Uh, the only reference that I have is maybe use you know assessing the hatch. So I say, well, if I if I look at the hatch, then um, maybe everything that's cut will show you the interior hatch, which is concrete. So that's the only way I was able to uh, guess whether or not this footer is a continuous form or not um, so 
these kinds of things are you know very uh, tricky to play around and the reason why you want to get it right is because when the time comes to compute the volumetric quantities of all the shapes you want them to be accurate as much as accurate as possible because you don't want an overlapping volume which does not uh, intersect and cut the other volume in a boolean like fashion where it is subtracted from the other volume uh, so that you don't have overlapping volumes which creates inconsistencies in the computation of uh, let's say um, you know, the quantities um, so here again I'm still you know working thinking that you know the foundation is continuous now it would be good if it's continuous but it's also a question of cost so if you're thinking how do I build and optimize as much as possible then it would make sense not to do continuous because continuous just means more material and so in this case like you can see um, the footer doesn't seem to appear continuous or well, that's what I'm trying to uh, assess but there's not enough section cuts everywhere so it's not exactly very easy to uh, clearly identify uh, what's going on um, especially in the front uh, because there's this uh, there's this one meter wide column uh, that's you know you know it's not really uh, the, the plants don't really tell you what the footer is but based on uh, you would see that in the video based on my guesstimation of, of what uh, is supposed to be and also my uh, natural sense of uh, what is right based on uh, architectural uh, foundation principle uh, so some of these things uh, you have to sometimes decide whether or not uh, this is you know you have to think architecturally in other words apply your knowledge or you want to just model what you think you in you know you see or, or what is being represented there so it's always a constant battle between these two mindset what you know and what a certain piece of information is telling you that it's supposed to be so as you can see here what I'm basically doing is is, or is extracting all the columns but there's this strange effect that of course here where uh, you know if you have a face that is flush with another one you know but there's a tiny tolerance when you cut that face or object out it's going to leave you this very thin face which can be a bit frustrating because the idea here is that you want to uh, remove all those unnecessary lines uh, uh, that seem to read on plan but for this particular example since we're talking about the foundation they're not gonna be read in plan so it's not gonna be a big deal as much to uh, to, to try to rectify those tiny faces that are left uh, you get to see that along uh, what I'm talking about if you haven't yet caught it um, you know it's not important at this point because we're doing the foundations but in other places where let's say you're working with elevations that would be an issue because those lines will show on elevation drawings and if they're not representing what you know anything that should then it would show an inaccurate representation as well so that's why it's imperative to get them right um, so still struggling with uh, trying to get these foundations uh, trying to make sense of the foundation uh, what's going on with the foundation so as you can see the cut show you what's going on somewhere in the, in the middle of the building but it doesn't show you what's going on in front so it's very it doesn't tell you whether or not this column here and so I have to basically guesstimate that, okay, well, you know, you cannot just have a small um, 0.75 meter wide footer for a 1 meter footer. And because they all have an offset of, you know, uh, 20 centimeter on the side of each side. Um, so that's the references that I use, uh, basic, um, basic, uh, uh, you know, 
so you, you have an offset of 20 centimeter on one side and another offset of 20 centimeter on the other side I was trying to use the mirror tool here that mirror tool is not exactly uh, you know uh, smooth in my opinion because it takes the view it takes the view as reference instead of the face as reference so that is very tricky to to use that tool um, I haven't yet gotten used to using that very well so there you go that's my footer at least that's what I think the footer is supposed to be but that's not to say that that's what it is um, so throughout the drawing uh, there's gonna be different sizes footers because there are columns that are 0.3 uh, that are 35 centimeters wide and the columns that are 30 that are 20 20 and 25 centimeters 25 centimeters wide and then there's one that is one meters wide so basically you have three kinds of footers here uh, that you see me work with okay so that's starting to look acceptable um, so one thing that I've noticed about the clone um, if I were to move the height property the clone is not dependent on the on the height placement of the object from which it's taking its clone from and you know I think that there should be an option for let's say uh, connect to the height of the parent object or not you know because in this instance I had to go and move the placement of the clone object all over the place and so uh, if you have a lot of objects that may not be very useful um, so just making the walls a little bit transparent so that I can see through and select the columns that I, I want to see so all those columns that I had to clone I would have to move them I will have to move the height of the placement one other one each one of them uh, simply because they will not move along so there should be an option which says connect to the placement to the height placement of the parent object or not because it's not supposed to be absolutely dependent on height so but you can tell it to connect to the height placement so if the if the parent object move in terms of height then the then the, the clone should also move in terms of height and then there should be an offset ability uh, which can tell it okay well if you move it with the height of the parent object but maintain this offset ratio uh, you know from the height from the initial base height so there should be there could be these kinds of options and I think I am going to uh, probably uh, ask the free card community on the forum what they think about it uh, uh, to see if it's a viable option Just continuing my extraction so I want to extract all of the all of the volumes out of the out of the, the, the ground slab because you know a column is continuous but in the end I might end up joining all of this into a compound or into a fusion it will depend on what I will try to achieve and what I will see best to do um, Tricky columns. So, because they're different sizes, I have to redraw them all the time. But again, you know, at this point, I'm. I think I've gotten most of the columns, uh, the foundation footers right. But I still have a little bit of. Uh, uncertainties in some places so I might have to recheck them along the way uh, in the modeling once again to make sure everything is good
Sometimes the snapping option plays tricks with you. So I think that this basically wraps up this tutorial at this point. Uh, the main thing is being done, so right now it's just, uh, you know, just playing around a little bit and taking some screenshots. So I guess I'll see you on to the next video. It's coming along pretty well. If you have any comments, questions, let me know. Until then, see you until the next video.